We live in a negative world. Like, if you stop and think about it, the ads we see, the politics we follow, the music we listen to, like, if anybody's ever heard Teardrops on My Guitar, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, it's a great song, but seriously, it's a, it's a doubter. And yet, through all this negativity, we find positive people, and that's kind of a gem, because being positive is important, especially if you want anybody to talk to you ever. But it turns out that being positive is also good for your health. Now, I like to think that I'm a poster child for this. I have cystic fibrosis, which, since most of you won't know what that is or what that does, it is a lung disease, but it affects literally every part of me. If it's not my eyeballs, my heart, or my brain, it is it's in some way, shape, or form affected by my disease. So I'm going to inform you on how being positive affects your mental health, how it affects your physical health, and how it can affect the medications you take. So to start with, being positive can provide relief from depressive and anxious symptoms. Now, obviously, if you have diagnosed depression or diagnosed anxiety disorders, it's not going to fix it, and I'm not going to try to tell you it will. But in singular instances, if you try to maintain a positive outlook before and after these things, your brain will have a faster recovery from the fallout. And that comes from effects of stress and psychological disorders on the immune system. Now, it is also important because excessive stress is one of the leading causes of depression. And guess what causes excessive stress? Being negative. It's known as perceived stress, and basically being negative increases your perceived stress like this. If I rear-end somebody tomorrow, it's bad, right? Like, it's not a good thing and it's stressful. But if I rear-end someone and my first response is, the world is going to end, that's a little more stressful than simply rear-ending someone and moving on with my life. So by being positive, you can get rid of this negative cycle, and that comes from year of conquering negative thinking. Now, in order to get rid of this negative cycle, it's kind of hard. Because psychologist Rick Hansen says that we are genetically engineered to be negative things. I'm sure that doesn't shock any of you, but he quotes that we are built to overlearn from negative experiences and underlearn from positive ones, which I guess is good because if cavemen had focused on how pretty flowers were instead of how dangerous mammoths were, we would not be here today and I would not be talking to you. But in modern society, it's not helpful. It just increases our stress. And so we have to actively try to break away from this negative cycle because it's not a good cycle. It just brings you lower and lower and lower until you can't get out of it. Also, being positive is important in your general mental health. There's a thing called the positivity ratio, and basically what it is is how many times you deal with a situation with a positive outlook as opposed to a negative outlook. If you have a high positivity ratio, you're golden. You probably have a flourishing mental state. If it's low or negative, you're either moderate or you're in a languished mental state. And I personally do not want to be in a languished mental state going through college. That seems like the worst thing I've ever heard. And those statistics come from the ratio between positive and negative effect and flourishing mental health across adulthood. So we've kind of been over how being positive affects your mental health, but how does it affect your physical health? Well, it's not as clear as your mental health. Obviously, if you break an elbow, being positive is not going to miraculously heal your elbow. Like, we all know that. That's not a shock but it can help improve your overall physical health. In a 2006 to 2012 study, and with a controlling factor of women that were 70 years old, the positive members of the study were 29% less likely to die than the other members. And I know what you're thinking, because I didn't believe it when I read it either, but it makes sense because positive people are less likely to be substance abusers. They're more likely to have good diets, they're more likely to follow exercise regimes, if only because they are positively telling themselves that it will work, that it is worth doing. And that comes from positive thinking, maybe powerfully healthy from the modern healthcare journal. Also, in my personal experience, I found that being positive helps me keep on track of my treatments. And if you've ever wanted to Google a cystic fibrosis treatment, it's not fun. It's this big and playful vest that shakes you for 30 minutes, and it's kind of hell. But when you're in a positive mode, you realize that it's helping you, that it is important to do these things because I like walking around without an oxygen tank. I like being able to play basketball for 20 minutes before my out of shape self has to stop. And frankly, I like not having a feeding tube. And so my pancreatic enzyme and my treatments are all important, but I only realize that importance if I try to maintain a positive attitude. If I'm negative, what doesn't matter? And so, now that we've gone over how it's important in your physical health as well as your mental health, how does it affect your medication? And the answer is, it doesn't. Not at all. 
Now, you may be thinking along the lines of maybe the placebo effect, and that's not the same thing as positive thinking. So the placebo effect is if you thought I was a doctor and I handed you a sugar pill, and you thought it was ibuprofen, your headache would probably go away. And I hate to break it to you, but if I take a sugar pill thinking that the mucus in my lungs can go away, it's not going to. It's not going to. It's not going to happen, and that definition of the placebo effect comes from can positive thinking make you well, which is a CNN article from 2011. Um, however, positive thinking is relatable to the confirmation bias. So if I am looking for red cars, I'm going to see more red cars. Are there any more red cars? No. no. Thank you. <laughs> I was hoping you would know the right answer to that. <laughs> There are no more red cars, but I see more red cars because I want to. So if I see more positive benefits than there actually are, it is because I am looking for them. And that's great. I like it. It's a dandy concept, but it doesn't change facts. It doesn't change the fact that you need to do these medical treatments and take these medications. And in my personal experience, they're both kind of bogus. I'm going to be honest with you. The placebo effect, as I said, doesn't really work in chronic conditions. And confirmation bias is great, but I can't trick myself into not having breathing problems just because I don't want to have them. So we've kind of been over how this all links up. So to recap, physical health and positivity are kind of related. It's good to be positive. It maintains your overall physical health. Mental health and positivity are super related. If you're positive, you're going to have a healthier mind, and it does not affect your medications. So don't worry. If you're negative, the ibuprofen is going to work just as well as it did before you were negative. And now that you're armed with this information, I think it's important that we all go and try to see how being positive can improve our daily lives. Because like I said, we're college students, we're poor, we're hungry. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm trying to convince myself that puberty's the reason my arms reach like down to my knees. Thank you. <laughs>